Heart-based is based on an understanding that the heart is much more than a blood pump. That the heart and the qualities of the heart, love, care, compassion, kindness that have been around forever in historical religions and belief systems and cultures, that that is the foundation of coherence in the human system. And as people activate that, medical practitioners, it actually communicates energetically to patients and actually gives us more intuitive connection and synchronization with the patients so we can be more effective in how we treat them. So heart-based medicine is activating and integrating the qualities and intelligence and power of the heart into medicine. But all the medical training is up here in your head. This brings it down to your heart so you know intuitively what aspect of your training is most needed. You also have the compassion and connection and care that nurtures you and your patient. So you feel more fulfilled in that connectivity and why you went into the healing profession in the first place out of that deep care and wanting to connect and wanting to help and serve it activates the feeling and the fulfillment of that as you put your heart into it, listen to your heart, follow your heart, and have more heart-based approach. Because you've got all the stuff upstairs. Now you want to integrate the heart into it so it becomes a rewarding practice. So I think Anne's vision is really to bring heart back into medicine. And what that is is our current healthcare system is based so much on process and data that somewhere along the way, we have kind of become disconnected from what brought us to medicine in the first place, which is this longing for compassion, this longing for vulnerability and to connect with people in this, you know, to connect with, I want to say patients, but connect on a level that is not ordinarily possible otherwise. Because when you are talking about connecting with somebody who is sick or ill, there is a there is a loss of the usual walls that keep us, you know, feeling like we are invincible. And suddenly we be, illness makes us vulnerable, right? And to want to connect at that level, right? And for physicians and healthcare providers to want to connect at that level takes a certain level of vulnerability on our own part. Right? That is what really we want to do. We want to connect you know, at, a, at a point where there are no walls that keep our, you know, our uh, persona intact, you know, where we are showing a particular part of ourselves to the world. I'm, I'm you know, this, I'm strong, I am, you know, I'm a particular way. And when disease takes that away, disease takes that away both from the patient and the provider. And that is the level at which we long to connect as providers, as healthcare providers, as physicians. But over time what has happened is that that aspect of medicine has been diminished and is systematically diminished with all the processes and the, the model of healthcare, which has become more like a business. And we simply have been rendered um, invulnerable. You know, we just have been taken, that kind of privilege of wanting to connect has been taken away. We have retreated behind the mask. I love that. And so we have now, you know, instead of connecting at that level where there are no masks between the patient and me, I am required to put on a mask and 
not connect at emotional, spiritual, and psychological and these deeper levels. Instead, I'm providing a service under this new business model. And, but that's not what, is, what brought us to medicine in the first place, right? Because it's our inherent drive that makes us go through years of training and this, you know, almost um, this uh, self, you know, deprecating kind of a life where we are, we make immense sacrifices to train in medicine because we want that. And, and yet we are not able to do that. And that creates a huge internal conflict and a rift, which, which results in this depression and it can't deal with this because this is not what I wanted. I think this is a, at the court of healing and the most powerful healing takes place from the heart because under the heart, that's a reality and the material life of a people's life. And you have your body, you have all these like, uh, meridians and uh, nutrition and also everything. But the things who direct the energy flow or the qi flow in the body is our heart. Our heart includes the intelligence, the consciousness, the mindset, and everything is, ha have something to do with our uh, emotions and you know, with our mindset, then after you break through the heart, you are able to connect with the divine energy, with a universal force, because we are all, that's the place we are all from. And uh, we are all connected. You know, the universal energy, our body's energy, you know, the, and the chi can connect all these dimensions, but the, the things which can connect you with the spirituality and then the reality is our heart. So uh, the heart is right in the middle. So the miracle happens is in the heart level, it's not in the material level. When the miracle happens in the heart level, then the physical, the material part of the body got manifested. So that is the relationship. That's why the heart is very powerful. And now this is what I see in the future. Um, the heart-based medicine will take a very important role um, in the whole healthcare system. Yeah, this is a beautiful bridge, and we were all born with it. We just need to recognize it and activate this bridge and put it into use. Heart-based medicine is helping doctors and the whole field of medicine to understand the energetics of human beings interconnecting. Empathy is a form of connection, and analyzing is a form of detachment. And as a doctor, as a healthcare professional, professional you'll need to be an analytical, but often with customers or clients or patients, they're needing more of a connection. And whenever we stand back and analyze, we detach and we have to do that, but it should be, there should be a foundation produced first, which is conversation, primarily where the provider is asking questions, uh, evoking responses. People can actually feel supported only if they share themselves, and they will only share themselves if they feel safe. So part of my contribution to heart-based medicine is helping us to understand for men and women, there is a distinction sometimes of how, what makes us feel safe and when we don't feel safe. But generally speaking, anyone who comes to a doctor who's feeling distress is more on what I call the feminine side of us, needing help. And at that time, listening is such an important skill. And while it seems so easy and natural to listen, actually there's ways to improve it. And one of those ways is to have an attention on trying not to, in your mind, put off if you can the analysis and solving problem, and primarily focus on an understanding which starts with asking questions, help me understand that better, starts with a feeling of empathy, and then going beyond empathy to a place of compassion. Now empathy, you can get trapped. Empathy is you're feeling what somebody's feeling, but often what they're feeling is they're feeling sorry for themselves, and then you start feeling sorry for them. 
and that is not helpful to them and it also will lead to doctor burnout. So what you want to do is be able to hold your space, often people call that presence, which is to hear what they're saying but not buy into the pity and uh, the word for that is compassion. There's actually a distinction between empathy and compassion. Compassion is, I'm so glad I can hear their pain, I can understand their fear, I validate it. This is uncomfortable, this is fearful, whatever might be the case. But come from a space, a presence, that is happy that they found you. <laughs> Isn't it great? Life is filled with problems and here you are. And we can provide the help that you need. You don't immediately say, I'm happy they're here. You, you hold that space inside that I'm sure happy they're getting help and we can, we can provide the help that they need. You know, the studies are showing that physicians and healthcare providers are really highly stressed. And when you're highly stressed already, you're not going to be providing a place where a person feels the center of attention. They need to feel connection. There's a magic we can learn from parents. If your child is crying, if you can feel a sense of empathy for the child and feel their pain, a power happens. The child feels better right away. But the child also feels better, one, that they had got an opportunity to express. Two, is that there was a validation and that you can relate in some way to their fear, to their hurt, to their sadness, to their anger. There's no trying to change how they feel, but actually a support that acknowledges it. Even if they're feeling sorry for themselves, you can feel the emotion uh, of fear or the emotion of sadness. You connect with that, but you put it in a space. The context is compassion, which is it's uh, not such a bad thing. It's a tragedy. I mean, we see tragedies all the time. At the same time, a bigger belief needs to be there, which is that we learn from our suffering. We learn from our pain. And we can learn better and grow through it faster if somebody is there to help us. And the way you help, it primarily is with your skill and your technology and your analysis, providing a service. But prior to that, another help that people get is feeling the connection that they're not alone. Because ultimately we now know that most illness and sickness, not all, but most, comes from a place of stress. And we are stressed when we feel we have to do it all ourselves when we feel that we're isolated, when we feel alone, when we feel disconnected. And so when someone goes to see a doctor, they're opening their heart up saying, I'm allowing you to give direction to me. First thing to do is not to quickly give solutions. I want to give one example of that. My daughter, one of my daughters, uh, around eighth grade, I used to do all her homework. She felt she couldn't do math and eventually she became the highest scoring calculus student in her university. Part of that was because dad, every night, did her homework with her. And pretty much I did it, and, but she watched how I did it. And about, eight, about eighth grade, it was getting pretty tough. I'd have to read the chapter of the, the math <laughs> to do the answers, you know, to be reminded of the formulas and so forth. So my brother happened to be visiting, her uncle is my brother. And I said, oh, he's a math PhD. He can come help you. And so he said, okay, what's the problem? And so we saw the problem, and his reaction was, oh, that's easy. No problem. And immediately, my daughter felt insulted because from her side, well, if it's so easy for you, I must be so stupid. That's called validation, Val the opposite of validation. So if somebody's in pain or afraid or upset, don't be so quick to give them the reassurance of, no problem, we can handle this, we can fix it. There's a place for that if it's appropriate. But the first thing is to listen and to validate, to let them know that they're not alone in this, they're not stupid for feeling this then you can provide your expertise. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that there's a number of different pieces to heart-based medicine. And one of them is um, the patient. Um, and we, I would, you know, I'd like to think that when we are coming from our heart and when we are um, connecting with our patients, that they feel that connection, that they get into that resonance, and that ultimately their health will improve, right? If we can make them feel safe, make them feel you know, connected and loved, and help them to connect to that deeper, truer part of themselves, that that will facilitate this whole healing process. And I think that that is really the, that's, that's the place of these healers that do this, right? Is they really, 
it's not necessarily their hands, but they're putting people into a place where they can be more deeper connected to themselves. And ultimately, that's over the long term, when we're talking 50, 100 years, that we're really facilitating a self-healing to occur in people. And um, I think ultimately that starts with the physician. And so if we are working the hours that we're working and we're in the sort of um, environment, the hospital environment with the air conditioning and the no light, the, you know, no windows and no environment where we can feel, um, where we can be in a place where we're, we're healthy. I mean, the, the, the hospital system isn't a healthy place for physicians. And um, I think it starts with that, is how do we promote health in physicians so that they don't have um, that baggage of that, you know, the fatigue and the stress and all of the things that are dysregulating their own systems so that when we can help them connect to their own heart, connect to their own system and, and divine place, that then they can actually do the healing work and they can do what we're talking about, which is ultimately affecting patient outcomes. But until we help physicians, which are ultimately the front line, that's just not, that's just not going to happen. So. Um, where I see heart-based medicine primarily is understanding what, where the issues are for physicians. Where are they struggling? And then being able to support them. And you know, I, 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 I think that awareness precedes change. So first, we have to bring awareness to the system and to the fact that physicians are burned out and you know, unhappy and they're suicidal and they're, you know, not sleeping and their relationships are falling apart and their health is failing. Once people recognize and become aware of this in themselves, then we can motivate them to make the change that's necessary, which is bringing them to their heart, bringing them into a healthy space so that then they can do their work for themselves and then ultimately affect others. And so bringing awareness, giving them some tools to do that work, to support them in doing their own healing work, in you know, looking at the fact that their you know, marriage and every single relationship they have is falling apart. Well, you know, that's important. You know, when, when we have people who, who are going home and are lonely or fighting, um, with their spouses all the time, then that's not going to, they're not going to come to work all happy and they're not going to come regulated and in their hearts. So just supporting people in those kinds of things, they're really important. I mean, we're, we are a, a, a species that needs others. You know, our whole physiology is set up to connect to others. And so really helping people connect to the people that are important to them, supporting them in that, and then also giving them tools to connect to their heart and to connect to their breathing, to connect to their body, to connect to that deeper, truer part of themselves, which is ultimately going to drive the rest and give people that ultimate healing potential for others. Heart-based medicine means to me the providing of whatever discipline in healthcare and pulling in a greater awareness of your heart and components of your heart and different energies and things that we bring to the table that might be intangible, sometimes tangible, um, but things that, what I was saying in my lecture, give your service that little bit of extra, which we like to title the heart and the love and the compassion, but bringing all of that in into whatever service you're providing so that the experience for the patient and the healing process that they're going through is significantly elevated. Yeah, I think that the medical profession has left out the heart, you know, in the in modernity in the 20th century, and uh, probably medical profession in the ancient times were more holistic, where the doctor participated with his heart and spirit as well. So we have to bring that back, 
but we are not just uh, repeating ancient times, but we need to reinvent the new times that are calling now, that somehow the relational dimension, kindness, being there with a present heart and attention to the client must be there in the medical profession. And I, I think there is hardly any patient in the world who would, who would not want the doctor to pay deep and uh, personal attention to him and her. So we have to bring that in to the medical profession. Well, for me, heart-based medicine really uh, looks to move the amazing field of medicine, as we have it already in the Western world, to move it to a whole fuller and more advanced dimension. The whole dimension of the experience the patient is having while they are being treated, while they're getting this incredible surgery, the transplant, chemotherapy, anything that is there to help them stay alive and thrive, that part is missing. And that part has a huge, huge, huge impact on the outcome of the intervention. So in the beginning, in, in, um, in the earlier, in the more the childhood of the medical field, the, the discoveries and the fascination with the power of medical intervention was such that the patient became like almost like an object. And not uh, maliciously, it's just the focus was on what was believed to be the reason for the success. And it is true that a lot of the success has to do with the intervention. What has been left out is the enormous impact of the experience of the patient while they are getting the intervention uh, in uh, the final outcome of that intervention. So <clears throat> heart-based medicine is a, the opportunity to intentionally begin bringing different aspects of the experience of the patient and how we interact with the patient in relation to that experience to potentiate the outcomes further and further. And another way of looking at it is that we are bringing more of the person into the consideration of the more direct traditional medical intervention. I think that what medicine can do is beyond remarkable. I would not want to live in a world where it didn't exist. The innovations every day are amazing. And there is more and more awareness that how you talk to the patient or whether you're friendly to the patient or not can also make a difference. But there is a much bigger conversation that can bring the holistic approach. And my angle is the angle of a, a, a thinking in terms of the brain and neuroplasticity and how the way you interact and connect or not connect to your patient actually impacts what the brain is doing. And that the hidden secret is the enormous impact of a positive brain change or negative you know, reactions by the brain on the actual healing process. So it all becomes the science, the medicine, medical um, skillfulness, and the emotional, behavioral, uh, internal feeling world of the client, patient become all one system that we address in different ways. This has been a Heart-Based Medicine production. Thanks for listening.